Bu Yuli layarnya mohon disesuaikan. Pagi Pak Hendri. Pagi. Assalamualaikum warahmatullah wabarakatuh. Perhatikan sehat. Ini yang sudah Pak Hendri. Alhamdulillah. Kangen saya Pak. Perhatikan. Ya monggo. Tetap semangat. Pesukas. Ya semangat. Pesukas Sense. Wajah saya Mas. Good morning. Good morning Sense. Hey, how are you? Good morning. Oh fine, thank you. Mister yeah. Wajuka. <laughs> I miss you so much, Sensei. Yeah, uh, so okay. <laughs> How is Akasi, Sensei? It's good. Yeah. <laughs> What is the temperature now? How how much? Sorry. Uh, your temperature in Akasi. Uh, te temperature is twenty twenty four. Yeah. 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 The time is old autumn season. <laughs> autumn season, yes, and say, yeah. Today is uh, day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How is yeah. your family? It's okay. They are okay now. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> okay, thanks, God. <laughs> Sends my regard to them, and say. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Arigato. Yes. Oh, hi, Ogosemas, Oscar, and say. おはようございます。おはようございます。おはようございます。はい、元気ですか。いや、元気です。元気ですか。うん。ああ、はい。いや、ああ、よし。Are you staying in home? Are you staying in home? Yeah, we uh, work uh, at. Uh, we work from home. We work from home. home. Oh, rare. Yeah, yeah. Very. So, we yeah. all stay at home now. Yes, I stay. I stay home now. Yeah. Morning, everybody. Konnichiwa. Otsuka. Morning. Ah, okay. Mm. On you, uh, fine, thank you. Thanks for joining us again. <laughs> Selamat pagi, Pak Dekan. Pagi, ya, pagi. Matanun sudah bersedia untuk kembali bergabung dengan kami. Amin. Baik, Pak Itu. Halo. Oh. <laughs> Di Pak Dekan. Halo. Sebenarnya, Rene, yuk, om, om. <laughs> Kemarin seharian di departemen Pak. Yo sekali-kali jalan ke kanan dong. Iya. Betul. Oh. Oh, green building ya. Apakah sudah bisa dimulai? Bisa bu, silakan di. Diselesaikan dulu ini tayangan. Oke. Okay. Ya. Yeah. Prof. Yasida sudah hadir? Not yet. Belum, Bu. Oke. Okay.
bagaimana? Apakah kita menunggu Prof. Yosida dulu? Kita tunggu sebentar ya. Mulai dengan jam 8.40. Suka Sensei. Hai, ya. Hai. I again I want to deliver my big thanks to okay. NIT Akashi because uh, my student, our student Anidita has passed uh, yeah. graduate from <laughs> Akashi. Yes. So what I say, uh, speak effort uh, from Akashi's lecturer. <laughs> I can forget about it. So again, thank you for all of the effort. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think uh, Pak Kajep, uh, Pak Dr. Agung Budi Sarjono, the head of our department also prepare, might be uh, with uh, Edo Sensei and Ernie Sensei preparing for the next yeah. uh, program, I think. Yeah, selection still will be, uh, we arrange the selection uh, mm -hmm. until now, yeah. Yeah, okay. Pak Adekan. Yeah. Prof Agung Wibowo, yeah. Again, a big thanks to you also <laughs> for yeah. any- Thank you. And I think many, many things that support to our department, especially for the student and the lecturer uh, to go abroad, to go abroad. This is yeah. a very big support from Faculty of Engineering and especially from, from you and your team in faculty. And again, give us any other suggestion <laughs> if uh, we can develop our uh, education system in our department. And this webinar also, we develop our concept of WING, W-I-N-G, W is Local Wisdom and Heritage, uh, I-N is Inclusive Design or Universal Design, Design for All, and the G is a Green Architecture. So we combine that WING concept to develop our education system. Uh, yeah. For the next future, of course, we should uh, accompany with technology, of course, that you have uh, program it uh, joining with uh, civil engineering, what we call PIM. So it's very important thing uh, to us to develop our uh, engineering corridor in our department. It's, again, thank you for all of the things that we support to our department. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and also do us, do our prof Akun, do our yeah. for us to um, yeah. So. We have we got the place of Allah as well. Bagaimana? Apakah bisa kita mulai sekarang ya? Yes. Sambil menunggu. Profesor Yosida uh, has been joined. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Mohon izin Bapak Ibu untuk bisa memulai. Baik. Selamat pagi. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everybody. My name is Kati. I'm the chair of committee of this event, the first international conference on sustainability in architectural design and urbanism, 2020, mm -hmm. organized by Department architecture, engineering faculty, Diponegoro University. For this year, the ICSADU is designed as a serial discussion 
contain of three series and this event is the second series the fourth is sadu with terms wings local wisdom uh, inclusive design and green building and for this second series the theme is inclusive design towards sustainability and survivability in architecture and urbanism this event is fully supported by faculty of engineering university di ponegoro and by wcu universitas di ponegoro this event is in the framework of visiting professor program that actually the program includes some of activities besides the four ic sadu serial discussion also lecture session manuscript coaching discussion for potential collaboration and others and ladies and gentlemen on behalf of committee i would like to convey big gratitude first for dean of faculty of engineering Universitas Diponegoro, Profesor Muhammad Agung Wibowo. Thanks for your willingness to open this event. Okay. And the head of department architecture, Dr. Agung Budi Sarjono. Thanks, Pak Agung. And of course, to our speakers who uh, come from um national institute technology. technology akashi college professor dr eng pakehito otsuka thanks for joining us and the second uh, come from graduate school of policy sciences professor dr tomohiko yoshida that will be join us Edit. Okay. And the third, Dr. Eng Bangun Harsrianto. And the fourth, Dr. Wijayanti M. Eng. And Dr. Edward Andrianto Pandelaki. And of course, for moderator, Insinyur Indrian Idrindario Master of Engineering. Thanks, Pak Indri. And of course, for all of attendants who comes from academician, practitioners, bureaucrats, and others. Ladies and gentlemen, to start this meeting, let us pray together with our own ways. Start praying. Enough. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to convey the rundown of this event. So this opening will be continued by opening speech by the Dean of Faculty of Engineering Diponegoro University and then continue by the main session that will be discussion that we, that will be led by moderator insinyur Indria Saryo master of engineering and then will be conclusion conclusion and then uh, the closing so ladies and gentlemen before a start to the next uh, speech um let's ask oh no 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 i will invite to the dean of faculty of engineering at the pondogoro university professor okay. muhammad okay. Abu phd your time to convey opening speech Please. yeah thank you to adi as the mc bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good morning. 
morning the oh. keynote speakers the mm. honorable head of architecture department the honorable the chair of the pod icsadu the organizing committee the participant ladies and gentlemen my name is professor mamat agung wibowo dean of engineering faculty di ponegoro university It is a such a good pleasure for me to be here to welcoming you all of the participants from the ICSADU Academic Collaboration in Architecture and Urbanism. This activity is hosted by Architecture Department Engineering Faculty. I would like to take this opportunity to extend my warm welcome to the keynote speaker. They are Professor Dr. Eng Takehito Otsuka from National Institute of Technology, Akashi College, Japan. Morning, Prof. Thank you very much for your coming. Good morning. Yes, thank you. The second one is Professor Dr. Eng Tomohiko Yoshida from Ritsu Meikan University, Japan. Morning, Prof. Selamat pagi. Iya, yeah, selamat pagi. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. And then Dr. Edward Mandelagi, hello Om. This guy on to come. Dr. Wijayanti, Dr. Eng Bangun, and also the moderator, Insinyur Indira Saryo, thank you for your chair for this session for this. And also, I really appreciate since we are here still here to have this conference by online and i do hope this conference give us a more valuable information and sharing the knowledge and also could strengthen our collaboration between the monokoro university and akashi college japan and also with ritsumeikan university japan finally please enjoy this webinar and insyaallah will be benefit for us. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thanks for the opening speech by Professor Agung Wibowo, the Dean of Faculty of Engineering, Universitas Diponegoro. And ladies and gentlemen, before we enter to the main session, so please, Uh, take a picture together. So um, please open your camera, set your camera on, please. And we will take a picture together. Yuli, are you ready? Yes. Okay. One, two, three. This one, two, three, this one, three, this. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Pak Agung. Yeah, thank you, Bu Adi. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we will uh, soon go to the main session. This is the presentation of the serial discussion. So I will, okay, I will invite to Uh, Pak Indria Sario as a moderator. Time is yours, please. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Aiti. Yeah. Um, first of all, let us thanks to the Almighty Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, our God, because of His blessing, we are able to come here to join our second webinar. Of the fourth ICSA do. Second, this salawat and salam also delivered to our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who has guided us from the darkness to the bright through knowledge and understanding. Ladies and gentlemen, um, the theme of our second webinar is inclusive design toward sustainability and survivability in architectural design and urbanism. It is the element of our webinar concept. Local wisdom and heritage, inclusive design and green architecture, what we call wings concept. 
today we have two session of discussion i divided because we have five uh, speaker uh, in order to make the audience can enjoy the webinars until the time end at uh, 11:20 so the two session of discussion the sub themes are first universal design on local community and public spaces it will pre be presented by Professor Takeiko Tsuka from Akashi and Dr. Bangun Arsitanto from Diponegoro University. The second one is uh, the subthemes of universal design for closer proximity between older parent and adult children. It will be presented by Professor Tomoiko Yoshida from uh, Rizumika University, Dr. Vijayanti from uh, Dr. Vijayanti and Pa uh, Edward. Pandilaki from Dipon University. Um, ladies and gentlemen, and now uh, let's open our meeting by saying Basmalah together. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Session one. Thank you. The next agenda is the presentation session for the first run. It will be given by presenter. Please welcome Professor Takehiko Otsuka from Akashi. The floor is yours, Sensei. Okay. Um, can you slide? Can you slide me? Not yet. Not yet, Sensei. No, not yet. Not yet. Yeah, we no. are waiting. Can you slide? Can can you my slide? No. Not yet, Sensei. Not not yet. Not yet. Oh, no, no, no. So sorry. Um, it's okay. Yes, and say okay, you can you see know, your presentation. Show my slide, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, and thank you, uh, thank you for inviting me at ICSADU. Um, my name is Takehiko Otsuka. I work uh, at the Department of, of Architecture. Akashi National College of Technology. Mm -hmm. um, uh, University of Diponegoro is a wonderful university that is studying research on advanced universal design uh, in Indonesia. <clears throat> okay. um, and uh, my, my college is uh, located in Akashi, west in Kobe. Um, international student from University of Diponegoro. Uh, she, uh, we call we called her Aninsan. <laughs> okay. Ne next, and um, this is my um, college gate. <laughs> okay. And and. <laughs> And today's menu, um, uh, first, uh, I will talk about the two topics. Uh, first, uh, what is universal design? And second is um, the challenge of uh, universal design in Japanese local community. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this slide show um, Indonesians is and situation, and especially in, in Indonesia, um, maybe around 2038, Indonesian society will be aged society, aged society, 
And the problem of aging in the world is more serious in developing countries than in developed countries. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, I have a quiz. Uh, what's, what's this? What's this? Mm -hmm. <coughs> <laughs> okay. This uh, um, this is um, easy to carry water, water carry water tank. I think uh, it is uh, very, very uh, universal design. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ne next uh, topics. Um, what is universal design? Um, and this slide is wheelchair user model in United States of America. Okay, but uh, what, are, what about laws and code? What about law and code? The negative uh, often focuses on meeting the minimum, the minimum and uh, requirements for accessibility while uh, losing the focus on the users. The positive, the positive um, can ex expect a very basic level of accessibility from state to state. Uh, address the design needs of people using wheelchairs and to a lesser extent, people who are blind or deaf. Uh, a growing demand for accessibility is support initiatives toward the social inclusion of people with valid ages and abilities. Designers still use traditional vocabulary, such as monumental stairs that segregate people and hamper accessibility and truly inclusive environments. It all starts being a part of a process. And this slide is kindergartens, kindergartens. Mm -hmm. um, universal design requires imagination and creativities. And in universal design, the thinking process, thinking process. Um, being a part of the process, um, educate the architect, expand his, her thinking. And see that designers appreciate that codes are only on benchmark. Uh, stress that you want your facility to, pro to provide a higher level of service for your uh, patrons and take part in a uh, programming phase. Architects uh, often conduct focus groups with staff with users. If not to do it yourself, uh, even with a low budget, uh, prepare a statement that reflects a, a commitment to universal design and share it with the uh, Architect. Given the fact, uh, it seems wise to invest our time and our resources one time to generate enjoyment of immediate and further benefit, not wait for a problem to get wise or unmanageable. The rule of design uh, professionals is to uh, reconcile uh, compliance with regulations and develop quality standards that exceed um, minimal uh, technical requirement. Um, but most of the users of architects, architect, uh, architect, 
architecture designs are Mr. Average. Mr. Average means non-disabled users in the in the year 30s, in the year 30s. Architects uh, may often have a poor understanding of people's diversity. Um, at, uh, this slide sh shows a uh, target, target for specialists. Um, Target for in, uh, inclusive design and extend uh, service difficult. And you know, uh, inclusive, uh, you know, uh, universal design is seven, have seven principles um, tolerance for error, size and spacing for uh, approach and use. And third, uh, physical, low physical effort, cause simple and intuitive use, uh, perceptible information, flexibility in use, equitable use. <laughs> the principles work most, uh, most efficiently uh, when used together. <laughs> At the beginning of the project plan for an accessible route, Uh, we funding not addressed by code um, using some landmarks uh, redundancy and sign should be uh, tactical visual high contracts audible audible <laughs> and ne next topics um, universal design challenge in the local community and uh, uh, I have a two case study one case study is uh, activities of uh, my college universal design project. Second is uh, local, local communities project. Uh, we called uh, the Wozmin East Wozmin Universal Project. Um, the concept is awareness and empathy and uh, together. <laughs> and Change of uh, consciousness and attitude. Uh, next stage, uh, behavior, uh, cha uh, uh, behavior change. And behavior change. Sorry, behavior change. I think, uh, especially uh, younger generations, uh, uh, particip particip uh, participation of younger generation is very, very uh, in important. <laughs> and uh, uh, the next concept meet, connect, and spread. Not because of four, not because of four. And uh, important concept together and with, together and with. And we are always close to you. And, and next, uh, this is my college to the university, industrial design project. Um, my, uh, at first, uh, uh, my college uh, will be uh, you be a universal college, and second dreams is to make uh, Akashi City the best in Japan to universal city. <laughs> um, this is a procedural uh, experience workshop for persons with disabilities. And next, and this is a experience of a UD para person with disability in my college. And this slide shows an historical and historic heritage building and accessibility in Japan. This temple is the Zenkoji in Nagano Prefecture. Uh, our student uh, is studying, studying accessibility of historical and the heritage building. And this slide is uh, Queen's House and Kew Palace after universal design renovation. 
in London and in London. Uh, uh, maybe 2006, 2006. <laughs> now, ne next is uh, a, a survey of uh, survey of actual measurement of convenience store toilet with wheelchairs can be used in Akashi. Uh, my student uh, uh, was uh, investigating, investigated uh, about 40, 40, uh, 54 convenience store. Uh, convenience store, you know, uh, convenience store toilet, you know, uh, available 24 hours a day. Property is managed and mainly lo many location in city. Uh, we uh, uh, we find um, some accessible toilet or uh, toilet where wheelchair user can be used with support. The uh, seminar student distributed 500 copies of wheelchair accessibility map in Akashi to Akashi citizens. <laughs> Next, um, this slide on. Um, and uh, uh, communicating universal design to children uh, using uh, manga animations. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, 36% in 2050, uh, one in 2.5 will be 60, uh, 65 years old or older. Elderly people are probably worried about their future. Uh, it is a younger generation that supports the elder, elderly and further development, the UD, UD society. And target is uh, children. Um, and to create an opportunity to know universal design, uh, friendly media, what, what is friendly media? Um, uh, picture story or manga, uh, and my student uh, 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 was well studied faculty inspection and interviews with the partners, with the parties, <laughs> and uh, my student uh, made two uh, original manga. Uh, one is title is uh, gentle. Uh, shiitake master room, master room. <laughs> and ne next is manga is uh, promise and awareness uh, contained in the context of manga. And inspect uh, uh, impression of UD picture stories uh, for elementary school students. Some uh, elementary school student say, I want to see it again. Oh, gentle mushroom, gentle mushroom. Um, I think uh, gentle mushroom, he, wa he walked too much and too tired. It was tired. <laughs> Impression of uh, uh, teachers. Oh, very, very, very good. Uh, some teachers say, is it the title? It is, it's a, it is a little difficult for elementary school student. Some student, very, very good. <laughs> and, and the next, and the Wasming is the uh, Wasming Universal Design Project. <laughs> this picture is uh, 2007, at 2007. Uh, after uh, 2010 or 2020, the party member uh, uh, had uh, 40 or 50, uh, 50 persons. <laughs> the members' uh, composition, uh, resident parties, home media support center, or town development council, natural environment, non-profit organization, to neighborhood high high school student, 
my college student, human rights group, and group of people with disabilities. And my project target area is Wozumicho uh, Akashi City. The inhabitant activities group of uh, universal design called Wozumin Universal, uh, uh, East Wozumin Universal Design Project, including the viewpoint of safety, security, and crime prevention without uh, administrative support in Akashi, Japan. These ac activities uh, foster impro impro improvement, improvement in our town and enlightenment in universal design. The core concept of these activities to raise awareness of the importance of these improvement in area accessibility by the inhabitant group and to let it be known that these activities don't depend on support of local government. These improvements <clears throat> uh, have been uh, accomplished through voluntary, voluntary activities since 2007. Uh, the activities were made possible by the genius cooperation between hubs, uh, the inhabitant groups and the local college and local high school. After both parties conducted an investigation, investigation into the dangerous point and barriers around the city, they, allowed, uh, they alleged that information for local inhabitants clearly and dispatched that information. Uh, furthermore, the inhabitants have shared good example and access improvement as well as, as well as bad examples and have been succeed in accumulation uh, and analysis of data. As a result of these activities, the public was interested in universal design and various ideas were put into action. The mem members, uh, the members, uh, high school and my college student uh, also participated. Uh, this slide show universal design inspection workshop for people with disabilities and local residents. After a uh, workshop, we made a summary of uh, universal design workshop. Uh, and and um, uh, our uh, 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 sorry, uh, th uh, this slide uh, show a uh, sp uh, spiral up spiral up approach. Uh, they have uh, three steps. Uh, first step is, step is practice, town inspection, workshop, user experience, and dialogue, uh, residential activities, uh, joining residential activities or event. The second step is uh, ex post evalu evaluation. Uh, communicate the result to local residents in an easy to understand manner, especially to use visualization, visualizations. And third step is uh, information sharing accumulation inheritance. A disclosure of information lives as a database and use of internet and visualize a continuity. It is very, very important uh, three steps. And um, this slide show uh, uh, communicate information of improved accessibility, improved accessibility map of Wozumi to local residents. Uh, we call this uh, good map. We, we call this good map. And this map shows before and after.
and net, uh, uh, this slide uh, show uh, presenting where accessibility issues uh, remain. Uh, we call this map bad map, bad map. Um, voice of residents and awareness and visualize as a map, sharing, sharing accessibility information for the town. Uh, sustainable improvement by, lo by local uh, communities, local communities. And another, uh, this slide is information of map of a place to uh, receive food and change a uh, map. And my student uh, investigated uh, all in all Akashi city. Uh, this slide show uh, a baby baby room type, baby room type. And uh, considering the use of men from the plan view. <coughs> Next, uh, student improved the interior of coffee shop where the people with mental illness work. Uh, after student improvement, the number of customers triples. We call this coffee shop uh, Kodachi Daini Kisa. Um, uh, this coffee shop worked to uh, twenty people. Twenty people. I have some open workshop at coffee shop, and before coffee, uh, coffee shop's picture after after. Before, uh, after, there's a small, small uh, challenge. Yeah, small challenge uh, with my uh, student. Ne next, student design, uh, also design information uh, and cafe in Akashi City. Uh, this log made my student. Uh, this, this slide shows uh, universal uh, design station we call called Hinata Boko Universal Design Shop, Universal Design Station. Uh, uh, Hinata Boko lo located uh, with near Akashi Station, near Akashi Station. Uh, this this uh, this picture made my student and in making process yeah, after uh, this is a shutter art pro shutter art project uh, th this right uh, is right akashi national college of technology student took classes to together at the special needs school, needs school for, for three weeks, for three weeks. And high school student part, participated in UD awareness at the World Miss Station. High school student and my student uh, announced a uh, universal design presentation in World Miss Station. <clears throat> Recent activities, uh, please show um, this website. Sorry, uh, written in Jap Japanese. And, uh, uh, and Hinata, uh, we, we, uh, Hinata Boku is engaged in activities to promote the creation of a universal society in Akashi centered on core members 
uh, consisting of persons with disabilities support staff for people with disability who belong to 135 East Dead. Please uh, show this website, website or Facebook. Terima kasih. Sama-sama. Thank you, Sensei. You're very, very welcome. It's very, very interesting <laughs> presentation, Sensei. Uh, next, uh, for the second uh, presenter is please welcome Dr. Bangun Harsli Tanto from Diponko University. The floor is yours. Uh, can I share my screen? Yes, please. Okay. Our shape. Is it already? Yes, you can see it now. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thanks all the committee because uh, we, for inviting me for this occasion of Exa uh, 2020 this day and. Today, uh, I would like to represent adaptive living concept in public space or building, almost. Why I put public space or building? Because I will tell you later in the uh, presentation. Uh, and the case is mosque. Okay. And this is about my flanner. Uh, if you don't know flanner, flanner is like, uh, a trip we do research by doing trip but because we're doing research so we should i should have a target so i should have method so i should have a documentation and how to analyze it so this is this is like my planner diary <laughs> and because it's adaptability my contents is to be what is adaptability and the concept of adaptability and the relation between Universal design principle and adaptability conception of MOS because I will tell you about MOS and there will be discussion MOS through time, through place, through culture, through technology, and MOS design in limitation before I make a conclusion. And yeah, it's actually it's like uh, if uh, sensei before talked about the universal design of seven seven principle of universal design in Japan and this time uh, I would like to make it like a broader meanings of the universal design uh, in adaptability set because the adaptation or adaptability is the when uh, as the adaptability for change alteration adapt information to change need in uh, of the occupants in time it it close related to the flexibility because uh architect are designing space so in the use of space the various purpose make the music uh making the alternation in physical uh, in physical shape or space and the other definition of the adaptability is ability to learn from experience the power to retain one experience and something which is a way of coping and difficulties to the later situation. And the third is the passivity of the building to accommodate effectively, evolving demand of its context, this maximizing value to life. So th this is the adaptability concept. It's about adaptation, it's about change, it's about the flexibility of post, uh, in using the space. And the relation between adaptability, it's like this. Actually, this is the concept of adaptability. Before the surrounding, the culture, the force, the constraint, I make it illustration is sh shape a uh, circle, but the space and building is rectangle. So the adaptability from before rectangle into the more circular things because they adapt their response the culture surrounding economic force and constraint that shape in circle at that time at that place at that uh, uh, force culture economic so the adaptability 
and universal design religion is uh, as we know that seven principle of universal design is equal to be use flexibility in using simple initiative in use principle information tolerance for error of physical effort size and space for approach and size it's from the ncu uh, north carolina state university gsu in 1997 but before that the one that coined this seven principle actually the ronald elmis made the fourth of the principle of universal design is supportive adaptable accessible and safety so the adaptability is in this side so the universal design should be adaptable to something this is the correlation between adaptability and universal design okay and let's talk uh, to the case uh, of concept uh, most design most design is a uh, most is the muslim worshiping built environment sorry there's a clinging oh, no, not in here uh not only for worship, uh, not only to do salat, but also the other worshiping activities like zikir, reminding Allah name, reading Al Quran or Tadarus, religious education, like a school. As you see in here, some people doing salah inside the building, outside the building, and sometimes doing the education inside the mosque. So, in this concept, we found that. There's many activities in the mosque that need to be facilitated. That's the concept of the mosque. And what is so a lot of activities? So what is the basic space? Basic space. As I told you before, that the built environment is for salat. So the basic space is prayer space. Okay. This uh we know the Kaaba in Masjid Haram. This is like the illustration of prayer space. It's in the I forgot in Palestine maybe, or in Jordan. I forgot because this type of desert mosque usually at that uh, in the Middle East. So the, this one is the prayer space. It's the basic space because mosque is the place to worshiping. So what is the requirement for basic prayer space? As we know, mosque is responsibility that not only in Sharia, but also adaptation, culture, and contextual response design. So we know the concept of Qibla or direction. All prayer space should be directed to Qibla, uh, directed Qibla to the Kaaba. Because yes, all Muslim prayer orientation is in is Kaaba in Mecca. So this is the basic uh, space that we need in the mosque. So wherever we pray, we should go to direct uh, the Kaaba direction of Qibla. So if the building or the space is not directed to Qibla, we sometimes we must disobey the shape. of the space because the prayer orientation is to Qibla but the building is not oriented to Qibla. We found sometimes a mosque with uh, like adaptation of the Qibla itself. We, they cannot change the shape of the building but they can change the prayer orientation only. That's one of the concept of adaptation in Qibla. And the second concept of Mordiskan is the other space is ablution space because the Muslim need to do uh, ablution or wudu before the prayer, before salah. Some mosques, they have special building to do the wudu because the, they need, usually they need a uh, water surface or they need a water tower they need water uh, to shape the water and then to 
showering the hand, head, mouth, and so on in this uh, uh, illustration. Or because the monitor is ablution, but sometimes there's no proper ablution in this moss, especially for undesignated moss. Maybe we can found in a certain area which not provide a proper moss. So we do the ablution in moss tafel or maybe in the uh, toilet like that. But in the concept of basic moss, uh, basic moss design concept is ablution. So through this illustration, we found that there's uh, adaptation of a building, of a space, even of a human activity of behavior to do this moss, to make this moss in a pollution space. Then, so after that, we know the concept of Kipla. So how we can find the place, uh, the direction of Kipla in moss. Usually, some moss make the mihrab to show where is the Kipla lead to. Sometimes we make the, uh, because the mihrab is place for the Imam to do salat, so they make a special space for it, like this one like an alcove, sometimes just like this. And because the uh, orientation and also the front area of the prayer space, sometimes they put mimbar. It's, mimbar is the place for preacher or the imam to give speech or preach uh, to support the salah itself, especially in jamaah. Uh, prayer with uh, big cup, uh, people that sit in that salah. So usually we found this mihrab, or sometimes in alongside the mihrab, mihrab there is a mimbar. So there's one, two, three. We already talk about three basic mosque, the sign space, and so how we know how we can know the time of prayer. Through times, there was a hikaya or stories. The Bilal do the azan on the roof of the mosque. And then in certain place like Indonesia, they use peduk or kentongan, adapting the culture of Indonesia. And because at that time, the technology is still peduk and kentongan, Right now we have sound system. We put in the usually in the roof or in the tower, on uh, roof uh, in the higher place of the mosque. That, so we need this place to uh, spread the time of prayer. But technology also gives the opportunity. We have uh, cell phone, smartphone send the time prayer so it evolved it's always evolved and then most true times most true times as we know that uh okay one minute lucky i will make it faster most true times uh we know that the basic one when Rasulullah period is in the room inside the house of Rasulullah. And then open space near the home. The first Salat it do in that landscape. That's where until now, the Sunnah for Salat it is in the, not inside the mosque, but outside. And then the reason of the house and the near home space become the Nabawi mosque. This is the recent condition of the Mahabali Mosque. That's the Rasulullah period. So the 
two time is the basic stand basic space of stand alone or family and then become the basic space of the neighborhood and then become the basic space of umma or the world this is the time because the uh, a lot of change through the time related to the capacity you need uh, to adapt then most true place uh, the kuba mosque is the first mosque that built by rasulullah well hijrah from makkah to madinah this is haram mosque the shape is quite different uh, this is the mak mosque the mak mosque is in indonesia with this meru roof and al aqsa roof uh, mosque sorry this is the sakara the place that we uh, stone the holy stone has rotated it at the concept of dome actually made from that rock. This is the uh, dome of rock. And this is the uh, Al-Aqsa Jami, the prayer space at that time of the Isra Mirat uh, event. And then this is the Turkey Mosque with the dome, a lot of dome. This is Bukhara uh, in Kazakhstan, the gate. So in here the basic building become the contextual relate to the place where the mosque built but after that the world disruption so in certain era we found that all mosque become uh, having mo a tomb become having minaret this is the world disruption because it's not contextual relate again it's more world disruption and Next is the culture. Uh, the culture uh, in Yogyakarta, there's a upacara skaten. So they put this gunungan inside the mosque to be prayed. And then just before this pray, uh, share to the community. This are the mosque. The, the China mosque is the culture of China. Al-Aqsa mosque. The Ayah Sophia, I told you before this, the tomb things is related to the Ayah Sophia history. Bukhara is related to the uh, the culture of the of uh, what what is that? Asia Central Central Asia culture. So this contextual design with the culture change. So if the culture of that context that place is changed, so the design also changed related to the. Universal design if defable and women and children at certain period is not being the basis of the design orientation. Now, with, with many law in Indonesia, in the world, that when the, the design of the public space, especially must should obey the women, the disab disabled people, the elderly, so the design of the mosque should be changed and it become the world culture. Is the technology? Yeah. Next, the technology will, will take control of the mosque of design. Is the first one is FEAC strategy because some area we need to make optimization of HVAC or heat ventilating and air conditioning. So they put sensor to this zone they pick three zone first is the friday prayer because a lot of people do friday prayer then the maghrib and isa because it at night so activate the light activate the maybe heater and all day is only in zone three the, the last one the last zone is the less people on that mosque and after that strategy we meet we put sensor and actuator to facilitate the feac the lighting and we put on the control monitor layer before we take it to the big data analytic on the internet so we can do the artificial intelligence things or just machine learning to activate the smart mos and the limitation sometimes we use the mos from the other function uh, the other building function or the other room function is this is in Korea in South Korea this is in Japan actually it's near it's on the 
I forgot the name. Shibuya or Ginza, I forgot. Shibuya maybe this one. In Shibuya. It make it take the apartment become the mosque and other function space because the mosque is not enough so they expand to the street. They expand to the other uh, function of this open space. Okay. So my conclusion will be adaptability is never ending process. So and the most design are related to many aspects. So it's the aspect adapt to meet the basic demands. Okay, the demand make uh, most design should be adapted. But sometimes the barrier also the demands. I think that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pangun. Now we still have about eight to ten minutes for uh, sharing uh, opinion, question and answer. But I think uh, we'd better use this time to give a chance uh, for you, Dr. Bangwan, to give us a sign of sharing opinion with uh, Otsuka Sensei. What is your opinion about your material uh, related to uh, Otsuka's materials? Please. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sensei, yeah, okay. please open your camera. I want uh, you two can uh, discuss uh, yeah. what is uh, the relation between uh, materials. Mm -hmm. uh, Sensei, uh, connecting to uh, Dr. Pangun's material. I think it's very important because it's for yeah. very uh, it's for uh, local communities. I think. Please. Mm, yeah. Mm. Yes. Um. Um, I, it is very, very uh, interesting mm -hmm. um, um, to Ban Bangun Sensei, Ban Professor Bangun Sensei. Mm -hmm. I have, uh, I have uh, one question, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, wh what do you think about uh, uh, authenticity in mm -hmm. most, Muslim building? Yeah. Authenticity. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Actually. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Thank you, Sensei. <laughs> it's very good question. The authenticity. Authenticity. Yes. Yeah. Uh, 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 as I told you in the earlier of the presentation, there's a basic one. The basic. The basic one that I told you about the historical about the Rasulullah period. Yeah. The mosque is start from the just like a space inside the room, inside the house, sorry, and then move to the bigger, uh, to the landscape, to the, what, what we call it, so neighborhood society, neighborhood size, and then become broader, 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 and broader. So uh, actually the universality is the authentic things that bring mosque and the other public space maybe. It is universality. It's not, we cannot make it like a box. This is the authentic one because it's public space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It may be it had identity, it had requirement, just like I told you there. So keep the thing on the prayer space. Mm -hmm. We should uh, go to certain orientation of Kaaba. That's uh, rules should be obey. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the really, really basic authenticity about the mosque. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> the other one, like ablution, prayer space, to shape the certain ornament, etc. It's, it's like a discussion of the contextual, about the culture, about the technology, mm -hmm. to the design. I think that's the adaptability of things, Sensei. Oh, and uh, this is okay. authenticity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, uh, I, uh, you know, <clears throat> it's a historical building. Yeah. Um, sometimes is not accessible. Yeah. In Japan, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, in Japan, in Japan, Japanese society, it is it's a ages society. Uh, over twenty five percent, over uh, um, over twenty five uh, six. Uh, sorry, sixty five 
over 65, mm -hmm. Japanese society is uh, uh, 25% mm -hmm. el elder people. Yeah, um, elderly. Yeah, elderly, yeah. Um, but but, uh, but uh, in in recently recently mm -hmm. a Japanese shrine or temple is uh, accessible to use uh, the lamp uh, lamp mm -hmm. or some uh, an another technology mm -hmm. uh, for example uh, internet or uh, um, <coughs> Some big video or some mm. other user experience, user experience. Mm, UX, yeah. 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 Thank you. Mm, oh yeah, it's very good, Sensei. Because in Indonesia, <laughs> I just start to make it that conceptual. <laughs> Actually, the the last the last three slide, it's about my recent research to apply the smart mosque. Yeah, maybe in Japan is already make it. Uh, yeah. A long time ago, <laughs> but in Indonesia we just, just start to make it, and I want to think the part of how to technology meet the uh, public buildings. Yeah, it, because the technology has become wider, wider, and because more sophisticated and helping us. Yeah, yeah. yeah the important is helping us. We don't, we should not well uh, afraid about technology, but we try to use it. Mm -hmm. For the society, our society. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's very good. That's very good, Sensei. Yes. And okay. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Can I? I have asked to uh, Sensei about the yeah yeah the detail because uh, Sensei already already make detail research practical research. <laughs> and the, the, yeah. It's okay. Five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. It's very interesting. Uh, it's... Yeah, because the practical research of uh, the Sensei and the student and the community in. Akashi made is, are there any, well, what we call it, blueprint, uh, blueprint or master plan of what next, what we're gonna do next after what this the, research? Yeah. Next. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, the, the next is uh, to, um, uh, to, uh, you, uh, to universal design education. Yeah. Education. Oh, education. Yes. Especially um, uh, for elementary school, junior high school student, junior high school student. Mm -hmm. I, uh, <clears throat> I, I, I tried. I, uh, we try to um, have a, a universal design se seminar mm -hmm. for uh, young, younger generation. Okay. Yeah. Very okay. important. Yeah. Thank you, Sensei. Yes. <laughs> Your generation is very important for the last. Very year. interesting. Yes. 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 Education is infestation, Sensei. Yeah. <laughs> for the next generation, it's very important. I think it's yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, uh, for uh, Otsuka Sensei, Professor Otsuka, and Doctor Bangun is very interesting. Uh, discussion and presentation but again that we only have a very short time so um, I would like to continue to the second uh, session of discussion uh, that will uh, welcome uh, Professor Tomiko Yusida for the uh, first speaker of the second session for Professor Tomiko Yusida the floor is yours Thank you very much, Indochan. <laughs> okay. Uh, I am talking from my bedroom in my house. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's very convenient to have uh, meetings with such uh, online style. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I would like to start from sharing my screen of the uh, iPad. A, just a moment, please. Can you can you see can you see my yes, sensei. iPad display? That's okay. Yeah, we can see it, sensei. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. Let's start. Yeah. 
Um, today, I am talking about the proximity of parents and children. And the, we ha, uh, the presentation consists of four parts. And the first one is the introduction here. And the second part is a practical scope. And the third part will be about overview of close proximity. And the, finally, I will talk about the analysis and conclusions, okay? So introduction. <clears throat> uh, I am belonging to a college of policy science and the, I am interested in the, the political aspect of architectures. And the, today's topic is uh, factors affecting close proximity of older parents and their adult children in Japan. A, I will talk about a, older parents, older parents and nuclear families of younger parents having uh, one or two children, uh, small children. And the, the, I will talk about the relation, relationships between these two generations. So this is a website of the Urban Renaissance Agency that is showing the rent discount for families who live close together in the Urban Renaissance Agency's housing complex. So they have a program to discount the rent of rental housing. And the UR, UR as you may know, a Urban Renaissance Agency is one of the, not one of the, uh, but uh, this is the biggest owner of rental housing in Japan. And this organization is uh, oh, uh, defined as <clears throat> semi-public sector. And the uh, Urban Renaissance Agencies have developed 253 projects in Japan and a new 200, 281 new town project in Japan. And they have a 730,000 units like this one. And the total number of housing units that are supplied by UR agency was, is 1.58 million. So as you know, to see this slide, the UR is the biggest sector of rental housing in as a uh, semi-public sector. And they are starting the discount of uh, rent. <clears throat> so this is about the practical scope of, the, of this study. And I am talking about the, I am going back to the introduction about previous studies regarding close proximity of older parents and adult children. The close proximity of mothers to their parents or their husband's parents rather than living together significantly increases the probability that the mothers will obtain jobs. So this is not only about the distance between two generations, but also about the uh, probability of getting job for younger female. So uh, Hirakawa pointed out the mothers will obtain jobs if they are living closely to their older parents. And the Fukuda and Hisamoto pointed out that the having children younger than six years of age, if they have a younger children, uh, than the six years of age, they are probably uh, living closely 
to their older parents. So this is a finding of Fukuda. And the uh, Fukuda also pointed out that the 15 minutes, 15 minutes by walk or by car or any, any uh, means of transportation. Uh, if they are living from the distance of 15 minutes, they are defined as the families who are living closely to their parents and children. So this is uh, findings from the uh, previous studies. And I oriented the problems of Japanese society. We should, uh, there are so many Japanese housing programs so far, but they don't pay a touch. They don't pay attention very much to the big relationships between two generations, but they are attaching now in importance to uh, uh, nuclear families itself. One family is living somewhere, so the municipality should how many numbers of housing units as public housing or private housing. So they, the municipality only pay attention to the uh, nuclear families in Japan. So we should have a paradigm shift from the nuclear family only to the relationships between generations. And the, uh, we are struggling from low fertility rate in Japan, struggling and suffering very much from the low fertility rate in these four or five decades. And the OECD Zutsui pointed out that the uh, female labor force participation is having a positive impact on the TFR total fertility rate. And I thought to know that the finding, uh, close proximity may be a support to, to improve such a low fertility rate. That is not a direct factors of uh, raising TFR, but uh, it may be indirect effect. And the, uh, how do the municipal government relieve the suburban decline in the framework of housing policies? So this is my own concerns about suburban areas of Japan. Um, the objective of the paper, uh, a presentation is to examine factors that affect the proximity of parents and adult children household by some basic statistical data, like uh, population census. This is the most biggest one. And the social index and housing and land survey. And I pay attention to the number of one person household of older adults, older than 65 years of age. So uh, this is my methodology and objective. Now, a practical scope again. So the UR agency, UR is uh, giving us the discount program for the residents who live together close to their children and parents. And the UR defined a, this is a one housing complex. And the two, if the younger and older generations living together in the one housing complex, it is defined as close proximity. And the, there are two housing complex in some area and they are close to uh, within two kilometers 
and they are living in each district. They can be defined as the close proximity household. And the nuclear families living in one a same a housing complex, and the they are moved, they are moving in to the neighboring neighboring districts, not by UR. Ah, this is not a UR, not non UR here. <clears throat> and this is a UR here. And one family is moving in to each uh, one district. Uh, they are defined also defined as the close proximity household. So they have they will enjoy the rental rent discount with 5%. 5% is the rate of discount. I mean, the, there are so many municipalities uh, giving this kind of programs in Japan. And this is a case of Kobe, Kobe City. Kobe City subsidizes a, the older parents who live in the area of their municipality. If they are starting to live in Kobe City and their ch adult children had still, had already lived in the Kobe City, the cost of moving in the Kobe City are covered by the municipality is up as the municipality subsidy. So this is, there are so many kind of, uh, same kind of program in Japan. So this is a practical scope of my research. And this is an overview of the gross proximity of Japan. This figure, ah, sorry, but uh, I will uh, give you the PDF file later. A, because this is a kind of, <clears throat> this is from the paper and a PDF file. A, this is showing the number of household by family type with household members of uh, 65 years of age and over. So all the a households are older than the 65 years of age. And the, this is a composition of one person here, a aged couple here, and parents and the children here. And this is a three generations, three generations living together. A, this is the number of a, older uh, parents, in other words. And the, this was analyzed like this in 1980. Now in 2020, right? So we have uh, almost 45 years, a change of 45 years. This graph is showing 45 years change. So you can see the rapid change of three generations here to here. In Japan, the older parents and older uh, person is living, more and more older parents are uh, living independently. And this is a very rapid change in these four decades. So this is we are facing what we are facing in Japan. <clears throat> more and more independent, the older generations are. And the, this is a break out of the selected tabulation of older adults in Japan, uh, housing and land survey in 2013. There are a older adults, ah, no, no, a ordinary household without 
household member age 65 or older and with household members age 65 or older. So a, there are, this is a number of household in Japan, as a four, as a four. And we have with, with the older parents uh, to a 20 million approximately. And the household with one and two members of all the others, we have 5 million now. So that is a statistic data of Japan. <clears throat> and this is uh, divided into one person to aged couple, one person and two persons, wife and husband. And they are living uh, closely with their children within 15 minutes here, 15 minutes. We have such a statistic in land and housing survey. This is the number of older single parents and the number of older wife and husband. And they have a children and the, uh, the, the black portion showing the number of households of no, without children. But they are having children in less than 15 minutes here. So this is a kind of a, a basic a description of the statistic data of Japan. And how about the distribution? geographically. Uh, red one is showing higher ratio of close proximity within 15 minutes of older adults who have uh, adults uh, who have adult children living in less than 15 minutes. A kind of a 15 minutes proximity rate is higher in Nara, uh, Nie, Wakayama, uh, and the, here, Miyazaki, or Western Japan. And this can, uh, close proximity cannot be seen in the uh, rural area of Japan, like in Tohoku, Iwate, Akita, Yamagata, Omori. They, there are so many farmers here. Farmers are working together with their grandparents. So they are closing. A, they are living together in one house, in one house. In this case, this is not counted as close proximity, but in same houses, right? So there are lower rate of close proximity here. And the, uh, this is uh, Osaka region, Kansai area. There are some higher municipality like this. So this is an overview of the, the close proximity. Finally, I analyzed the uh, basic data of social indicator and selected 293 variables from seven categories, population and household, economic base, labors, weddings, health and medical care, welfare and social security and family budget. Among these 293 variables, I made a regression analysis. It's a simple, plain, simple and plain statistic method. The dependent variable is a ratio of one person household of all the adults living close to their children. So the independent variable, ah, no, 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 sorry. Dependent variable is the number of uh, close proximity, in other words. And the uh, so the, the we can get uh, this kind of data from the website of statistic. This is a summary of my model, regulation analysis, multiple regulation analysis. The dependent variable is the ratio of one person household of all the others. They, I thought 
they were more necessary to have uh, support from the younger adult uh, children with grandchildren or younger parents. So that's why I chosen the one person household of all the adults who have a child living less than 15 minutes away. And the, finally, I fixed the independent variable with four variables. Uh, child dependency ratio is defined as population under 15 years old divided by the productive population. And this, the second one is ratio of family nuclear household, nuclear household in Japanese, a key term of statistic. Uh, ratio of persons who employed in primary industry and the number of retail stores per 1,000 person. So that is a uh, model. I made up two tables with prefectural data. And the another one is uh, municipal data with 199 in Kansai metropolitan area. So this is all, all Japan analysis. And the, this is an analysis of Kansai area. <clears throat> and finally, I could get more significant in the prefectural level because parents are living in the municipality or one city and the parents are, uh, and they are working in another city or the parents are living in another city neighboring to the, the one area. So I guess municipal analysis is not so much significant, but the more significant in prefectural level. I'm showing the a sorry. A beta is showing the strengthness of the, the sensibility and the most significant one is a retail store per 1,000 persons in a prefecture. And the second one is the ratio of family nuclear household. I can understand well, because they are, if they are nuclear families, they are closely living to their parents. So, so that the beta of the uh, a nuclear family was the second biggest. And the ratio of one person employed in a primary industry, primary industry, if they are working in the farm for, as farmers or fisheries, they should work together and they should live in one house. So it is strongly related to the number of closer proximity. So, conclusion. A conclusion. The analysis clearly showed that the factors affecting close proximity, if they are living within a 15 minutes distance, they are new, uh, they are having younger children, younger children with less than 15 years old. And they are nuclear families, of course. And they are working in, not working, because the negative, is the coefficient, coefficiency was the negative. So they are not working in the primary industry. And the, they are living in the area where there are so many retail stores. It's a, phenomenon of convenient places, right? So this is a conclusion, possibly because close proximity is a typical phenomenon in more urbanized than the rural area. Close proximity is a phenomenon in urban area, 
not in rural area. That is my conclusion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for listening. That's all. Thank you, Sensei. Yeah. Yes, Sensei. Thank you. It's very interesting, Sensei. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, we'll continue to the next uh, presenter, the second presenter, Dr. Vijayanti. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you, uh, Pa Angry. I will share my uh, slide. Okay, Bianti. Yeah, is it clear enough to see? Yes. yes okay. Okay. Uh, good evening. Uh, sorry. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, this opportunity. For this occasion, I will uh, share my experience in conducting research on housing for the elderly, time by time, some done in team and some done uh, by me myself, and all have been published uh, in seminars and journals. And let me show you the second uh, slide. This is a background uh, of my uh, research. Uh, the background of uh, the research on uh, housing for the elderly is about the increasing number of the world population. And along with this, the number of the elderly and the people with special needs also increased. In the case in Indonesia, based on uh, 2010 census, the percentage number of elderly was uh, 7.6. It means that uh, Indonesia has an aging population and this continues to increase until 15.8% in 2035. Uh, in this slide, we can see that the population pyramid in some countries becomes like uh, onion shape. It means uh, that the population becomes eight time to time. You can see this is the United uh, States uh, population pyramid. Uh, this is uh, Japan and this is uh, Indonesia. Uh, in this slide, uh, we can uh, know the, back, the background of uh, my research in housing for the elderly is about uh, there is an aging in place phenomenon. That means that uh, the elderly prefer to live in their home during their life. And this effect, the housing provision. And another reason is about the assessment geriatry. In gerontology, environment where the elderly live influences the health of the elderly. So that housing is important place for the elderly. This is environment. Uh, means uh, there is a uh, housing in this case. And last but not least, there is a mandate from uh, WHO which support uh, those background to reach the welfare of the elderly. There is age-friendly city concept. This concept uh, focus on how the people can get active aging experience in their environment. 
in this uh, slide, uh, I will uh, show you about uh, the research time by time start from uh, 2007. 2007, uh, I and my colleagues uh, study on uh, accessibility on housing area, a comparison between Japan and Indonesia. Uh, this is uh, supported by uh, Professor uh, Jun Miyake, Professor uh, Otsuka, and Dr. Tani Takeru as a host uh, when we conduct uh, the, this research in Japan. And in 2009, study on active activities of the elderly and the facilities in public housing. I conduct it in Semarang. And I uh, did uh, this research with uh, Pak Edo. And uh, this is uh, uh, supported by Universe Foundation. And in 2011, study on places where the elderly meet friends. Uh, and also at the time, uh, I also getting knowledge more about UD, uh, universal design and uh, inclus inclus inclusive design in Akashi College uh, in Tokyo. And in 2013, study on elderly friendly high rise housing for the elderly, comparison between uh, Indonesia and Japan. And I, uh, again, I uh, uh, did with Pak Edo and Pak Septana. And at the time, also we supported by Professor Taiki Kosuka as a host. And the research uh, done in Japan and Indonesia, supported by Sumitomo Foundation. And 2014, uh, study the field. Uh, study in housing for the elderly in Kyoto for Korean immigrants. At the time, I uh, follow uh, uh, Siti Rukaya uh, doing research in uh, um, what uh, building, historical building in Kyoto. In the brief time, I uh, bring uh, Professor Dr. Tomohiko Yoshida uh, bring us to uh, look at uh, uh, housing for the Korean immigrant. And then uh, in 2015, uh, we, uh, the, the research is about species of the elderly based on the living arrangement in micro scale. This is uh, my uh, study, my research when I uh, take a doctoral degree in the Ponogoro University. Support, uh, and the supervisor is uh, Professor Eko Vidyarjo. Professor Bambang Setioko and uh, Pak Idu. And then in 2018, uh, I uh, conduct uh, research to finish my doctoral uh, degree about the meaning of home for the elderly based on home adaptation in public housing Semarang. And then in 2020, uh, this is uh, ongoing research. It's about study on smart home to support the elderly in public housing based on home adaptation meaning. And for this research, uh, the supervisor is uh, Prof. Harry Mauridi from Institute uh, Technology Surabaya. He is uh, uh, the alumni of uh, Osaka University. And uh, now he is a professor in uh, the US. And in 2020, I will continue uh, the study about a smart commun community to support the elderly in public housing based on uh, local wisdom. Okay, and I hope in the future, in the next year, uh, should be continued uh, uh, to sustain research on housing for the elderly, uh, for elderly friendly housing. And okay.
this is uh, the uh, the explanation about the research and in 2007 is this this is the first research gave us the understanding about many kind of housing for the elderly care and services system and also the technology that support the life of the elderly smart home and assistive technology and also we were introduced universal design and its implementation and then uh, we can uh, know of various of uh, various types of residential for the elderly like uh, senior housing for healthy and independent elderly nursing home for uh, dependent elderly, special nursing home for elderly with dementia, and senior colleague, uh, village uh, area that consists uh, residentials for independent and dependent elderly with a Mura concept. Mura means village. Uh, one case included uh, buildings uh, to uh, care for support person with disabilities. So in Mura concept, uh, uh, not only uh, thinking about uh, the care, uh, to care the elderly, also to care the person with disabilities. And then this is the pictures when we uh, conducted uh, this research. In uh, when we uh, studied about uh, assistive technology, we visited uh, the Yogo Institute uh, of Assistive Technology in uh, Kobe Prefecture. And this is uh, uh, one uh, picture uh, I have, and we visited the nursing home in Toyohashi. This is the team of research. And, uh, we can see who Professor Nani Yulias Tuti is also uh, uh, involved in this research. And uh, this is uh, my professor, uh, Yaki Sensei, Dr. Takiritani, and this is uh, one professor from uh, 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 TUT also. Uh, he is the, uh, uh, he uh, uh, manages this uh, nursing home. Uh, and, and this uh, uh, research conduct in uh, some uh, cities like uh, Akasi, uh, Kobe. Uh, Nagoya and uh, Ahara. This is uh, the situation what uh, I have uh, uh, seen at the time about the environment, accessible environment for the elderly especially. And 2009, study on activities of the elderly and facilities in public housing in Semarang. And uh, this pictures uh, shows about uh, activities and facilities. Uh, the activities uh, such, uh, such as uh, fitness activities and re religious activities, health check activities and social activities. And uh, this, uh, these activities are done in uh, uh, facilities in uh, housing area, on open, open space and outdoor space. And this is in a mosque. In this is in a, a public uh, building. Yeah. And then in 2011, uh, we, uh, the study on places where the elderly meet a friend. Uh, the result could be found places where the elderly can make uh, make social contact with other people outside uh, their homes. Uh, for example, neighbors and the people who live in the outside of the housing area. And the places where the elderly can meet friends is uh, in the street, and then in the tea junction, and uh, green grocer, in traditional market, yeah? uh, in the uh, corner, yeah? one corner in traditional market, and, the, and in the multi-purpose building and uh, also in guard house and also in the open space 
And there are meanings uh, of the places where they really meet friends, that is uh, for sharing, for doing worship, for getting entertainment, for getting healthy life, for establishing and maintaining social relationship and brotherhood. All meanings show a kinship among the generations in the housing area where the elderly live. And uh, 2011, uh, if I have uh, said, uh, been said before, uh, we are also getting knowledge of inclusive design and uh, support, but to support research. Uh, at that time, uh, I get knowledge of inclusive design for design product from Julia Kassir Sensei. Uh, she is a professor at Kyoto Design Laboratory for Kyoto Institute of Technology. And uh, also, uh, I can uh, uh, get knowledge more about universal design, the implementation of uh, inclusive design in the process of the renovation of Himeji Temple. At the time, Asuka uh, Sensei uh, uh, get me to look at that renovation. And in 2013, uh, during, uh, I conduct uh, the study on elderly friendly high-rise housing, uh, the comparison study between Indonesia and Japan, uh, conducted in some high-rise housing where the elderly live in Semarang, Kobe, and Akasi. Uh, this is the high-rise housing in Semarang. This is a uh, high-rise housing in uh, Kobe and Akasi. And the result is about the importance of compact and accessible high-rise housing design that allow the elderly could have experience of social activities in their community so that they are not trapped in their unit of house. And during, and at the time also, during the breaks of uh, study in on historical city of Kyoto, I got knowledge of how to design the housing for the elderly by using grassroots method in a specific site along a river and how the elderly could enjoy their life by visiting some tourism destination and shrines and temples. You can see uh, through these pictures. And 2015, uh, we, uh, I studied about spaces of the elderly based on the living arrangement. And the findings, most of the elderly like to spend time in outdoor, especially those who have grandchildren. They are looking after their, uh, their grandchildren and uh, the outdoor is the best place for the children to play since their house has no adequate yard. Every uh, elderly who live alone tend to spend uh, time at home. And in uh, 2018, uh, I did uh, research on housing adaptation in public housing uh, uh, case study, Banyumani Public Housing in Samara. And the conclusion is uh, the finding, yeah? Their kind of home adaptation happened in micro, meso, and... Uh, sorry in micro, meso, and mac, uh, mac, macro scale done by the elderly with own, uh, all self-help funding. From those experience, the, they need advices from the competence institution. And 2020, ongoing research on smart home of the house of the elderly in public housing and will be continued in 2020 uh, as a proposed research on smart community based on local wisdom in public housing. And I hope uh, after 
uh, Professor Yoshida explained about his research about the proximity of uh, about housing uh, uh, between the proximity housing in a relation uh, uh, to to the uh, what to sorry uh, to uh, children yeah uh, uh, have to close to the parents so I'm uh, I think uh, that it can be my uh, idea to to do uh, research in uh, future years and uh, summary uh, by this diagram can be explained that uh, productive research is ongoing research and the future research comprehensively have a relation and intended to reach the suitable housing where elderly can get their uh, life, uh, livelihood. livelihood. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that's all my experience doing research on housing for the elderly time by time. And I hope it can be continued to get good environment uh, for the elderly in all society. Thank you very much. Domo arigato. Terima kasih. Okay, thank you, Bu Ijandi. Dr. Ijandi is very interesting too. And close related to the first speaker, Professor Ijandi's material. So we will continue to the last but not least. Uh, Mr. Edward Panilaki's PhD will present the last uh, material to us. The floor is yours, Edu Sensei. Yeah, thank you, uh, Indri. Uh, very nice presentation from uh, Vijayanti Sensei and Yusida Sensei and Bangun Sensei and uh, Ajuka Sensei. <laughs> Okay. Stop. Uh, good morning to you all. <clears throat> so good condition, uh, safe and keep healthy during this kind of condition. And I would like to thank the committee to, uh, to give the opportunity to me to share a little bit in this. Uh, I ICSABU series care yeah, about the inclusivity related with today's uh, condition, uh, where some of you might uh, also experience directly, uh, especially who reside in Indonesian cities. I'm not sure whether uh, Yoshida Sensei and Osaka Sensei also experienced the same condition in their surrounding area, uh, just like what I'm going to share. And the theme is not uh, directly about uh, elderly, but uh, if you uh, See my uh, screen. Yes, yes. I can see. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, the thing is not uh, related directly with uh, the elderly, just like what uh, you see the senses and which I sensei just share. But it is important also for the elderly because. Uh, the elderly is more prone to this situation. Uh, the title of what I'm going to share is uh, Less Inclusive Space Towards Sustainability in Housing Area, Learning from Current Condition. 
So the keyword of inclusive has a strong relation of sustainability concept in from a social aspect. According to Fletcher, 2006, uh, inclusive design is about making places where everyone can use. It aims to remove uh, the barriers that create undue effort uh, and separation. Uh, and in it, it enables everyone to participate equally, uh, confidently, and independently in their daily activities. Uh, the design of uh, built environment are supposed to be more and more inclusive uh, nowadays because the way places are shaped and designed will affect our ability to move, to see, to hear, and communicate, and also to interact with each other. Uh, you can see the uh, slide change of uh, my presentation. Okay, but during this uh, current condition of pandemic, there are interesting things to learn. Uh, for us in Indonesia, especially in Semarang, maybe this is uh, very common, uh, we can see, uh, related to the existence and application of the inclusive uh, concept in the field environment. So uh, this is interesting uh, because uh, this condition is appears in uh, many housing area in uh, Semarang in case of uh, me, I saw it in Semarang, but as I browse from the websites, uh, uh, they are also uh, cases appears in outside of Semarang. And also, uh, I think uh, many of you, uh, the attendance of this uh, webinar, uh, Right now, is currently in, uh, reside in other city of Semarang, mm -hmm. especially Otsuka Sensei and uh, Yoshida Sensei. So, <clears throat> according to the field observation and uh, observing from the news and reports uh, written in the internet, so during this pandemic, the adjustment uh, made by and he inhabitants in uh, various housing area in Indonesia. And one of the adjustment from it uh, form is the restriction and the closure of streets in their neighborhoods. Uh, this uh, several figures uh, show the adjustment form of housing closure based on uh, field of and search uh, which from the uh, websites. There are various kind of uh, adjustment uh, started from uh, close neighborhood street, uh, usually at one end the street is closed and at the other end uh, the street is uh, open. Uh, this is, this picture is a picture of uh, the other end of the street that we have just uh, uh, seen. So uh, the this is the
putus ya. Oke. Okay. Ya. Yeah. Sorry, I think I lost my connection. Uh, It's okay. It's okay. Okay. Please I will uh, turn off my video. Okay. Uh, so you still see my uh, share screen, uh, don't you? Hello. <laughs> yes. Hello. Not yet. Indri. Present. Not yet. Yes. Not yet. Okay. Okay. Please wait. Yeah, we are waiting. Hmm. Sorry, please wait for a moment. It's okay, Ito Sensei. We are waiting. Yes, I'm okay. working on my uh, slide. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I'm worried that <laughs> the, the network is, is uh, closed again. It's uh, okay. So, uh, yeah. Please, please, wait, wait. I will close my PPT first and then open it up again. Okay. Yeah, we can see it. Okay. It's okay. okay. That's okay. Okay. So uh, some of them uh, equipped with the uh, body temperature checks and uh, sometimes also with the uh, disinfectant gate. Uh, automatically, so uh, this is uh, uh, some pictures of uh, the condition of the adjustment made by uh, the inhabitants. So it seems that also in uh, some in the other countries. I took from the internet is from the Myanmar. So uh, there is also such a kind of uh, their uh, area. So, so this adjustment is a response from the inhabitant to what the condition uh, of a pan. So it means to it, uh, conduct the test means to reduce and Uh, prevent from the risk of exposure or transmission so that the inhabitant can keep in a safe and uh, healthy uh, condition. So, or in other words, it means to uh, survive and sustain the inhabitant condition through limiting access, uh, filtering and uh, restriction. 
So based on this conditions, this might need to be in a state or condition of less inclusive in order to support uh, sustainability. Within these uh, forms, there are several lessons that we could learn. The first is that uh, implementing uh, sustainability will depend with its context. It shows that there is no single blueprint in approaching the concept of sustainability. In this case, uh, normal condition might have a different approach from a not normal condition and maybe also with the new normal condition that we uh, doing uh, currently. And the second is that this uh, condition also shows that there is a spectrum of uh, inclusivity needed in order to support uh, sustainability. Sometimes or in a certain condition, spaces or places need to be less inclusive. Restriction or delimitation and filtering in the utilization of space might be needed in facing a certain uh, condition. The next thing that we learn is that within this spectrum, there is a trade-off happen between aspects and elements in sustainability. In one aspect or element, the aim could be more achieved while in the other aspect or element, the aim could be less achieved. In this case, inclusivity and accessibility might get reduced, but vitality will receive a stronger concern and benefits uh, to this uh, condition. And the other thing is that uh, flexibility is needed. I think uh, Otsuka Sensei and Bangun Sensei already mentioned about this in the concept of uh, universal design and also in the concept of uh, inclusive design also just mentioned that uh, flexibility is needed. Uh, so that uh, in this case, the change of need in a certain condition uh, context could be easily fulfilled by uh, the flexibility of the uh, built environment. And as we learn from the cases that uh, shaping place a uh, less inclusive space through limiting access and intensity of interaction uh, in order to support the sustainability of the inhabitant is uh, needed to prevent uh, the inhabitant from being uh, risk of the uh, condition right now. Okay, I think uh, that's all that I'm share with all of you uh, today. Uh, I hope that it could uh, give us fun course for uh, uh, maybe discussion or something like that. Thank you, Indri. Okay, thank you, Edward Sensei. It's very interesting too, and you. I think you would just like to make a conclusion and relationship between the first speaker and the and you. So it's it's thank thank you to you. Thanks to you again. <laughs> yeah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have finished uh, the five speakers. It's is yeah. What 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 should I say? It's very very interesting, and I will try to make a connection between uh, these uh, five speakers and. And yeah, of course, in the second session is also interesting, uh, starting from uh, Professor Yusita and Bu Wijayanti and uh, Pa Edo. So might be, I would like to uh, give a chance to Professor Yusita to talk with Bu Wijayanti and Pa Edo about uh, these three uh, materials. I think it's very interesting too. Please, the floor is yours, Yusita Sensei. So I have, can you hear me? 
<clears throat> yes. Sure. Yes. Ah. So I have a question to Yanti San, Vijayanti, about yes. your case study was about the uh, public housing, right? But the is it defined as uh, general public housing for the lower income class the, or other specific uh, case of public housing? Because you are studying about the housing for the elderly. Yes. But the uh, public housing is defined, generally defined as the uh, lower income class. So uh, how would, would you explain about the relationship between public housing and the elderly? Okay. Okay, uh, thank you, Sensei. Uh, some uh, researches uh, uh, conducted in uh, public housing uh, where the elderly live and the public housing uh, where I conduct uh, the research uh, is, uh, for example, uh, Banyumanik public housing is a public housing is uh, special for the uh, lower income uh, and, and I mean uh, for the pegawai uh, negeri what is the pegawai negeri in, in, uh, in uh, civil servant civil, uh, civil servant, civil servant, yeah. civil servant. Uh, and the middle and low uh, level. Uh, level. level yeah Middle yeah. the low uh, level of the civil servant. Uh, in this case, is uh, in uh, Banyuma public uh, Banyumane public housing. In general and, cases, in general cases, are they living uh, with the three generations or one or two generations with young adults or older yeah. parents? Yeah. Is it is it the same? Yeah. Uh, now, yeah. Uh, nowadays. Uh, uh, maybe uh, the, the some of uh, the elderly live alone, but uh, uh, most of them uh, still live in three generation in one group. So that is uh, for Indonesian society, the concept of three generation in one group is the best. Yeah, because uh, maybe it's different with uh, Japan. The housing ownership is different. Uh, in Japan, uh, the people can uh, live uh, outside the uh, house of the parents by uh, renting. Uh, and, and then they can uh, move again close, uh, closer to the parents by uh, also by renting. But in Indonesia, the ownership is uh, tend to own own uh, house yeah so uh, that is uh, maybe a slight a different uh, uh, a problem to to make uh, parents uh, closer to the, uh, the children so uh, when uh, the children uh, live together with the parents is the best uh, solution same in the same house is the best solution yeah but uh, this is the phenomenon in the uh, low till uh, middle income thing. I understand. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yes, just in saying to Jandi Paido, would you uh, give uh, such kind of sharing opinion to Prof. Yusida and Bubi Jandi, maybe? Uh, okay. About uh, elderly and inclusivity. So, uh, I'm interested in one uh, in the presentation of the Yoshida Sensei is that uh, uh, related with uh, and the Sensei just said that in Indonesia, uh, uh, the the uh, the characteristic which is uh, uh, push or 
what can I say? Didorongkan. Uh, push, yeah, to be push. Encourage. 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 Wish to be uh, to have the uh, three generation one roof, but then says the uh, research is that uh, uh, they who live in the same house is not counted. So maybe it's also interesting uh, things uh, that uh, I think maybe also in Japan uh, uh, occur that. Uh, uh, parents, all the parents who live uh, together with uh, their children, especially uh, Yesida Sensei said that in the remote or in the suburb or in the village area, uh, some of this kind of uh, condition also appears. Uh, but I don't know if it uh, in the, the the urban area is it also common uh, such kind of condition uh, for parents who still live with uh, uh, their children, although their children are already have uh, their own family. Uh, in one or two uh, TV programs of before after, <laughs> I saw some people after. Uh, this is one of my favorite uh, TV show. Uh, some of the uh, family in uh, urban area. Uh, uh, it shows that uh, some of them still have the uh, not the nuclear family, but an extended uh, family. So usually uh, uh, one of or one of the the older parents and. Uh, live with their uh, children or uh, in one case I saw that uh, one uh, parents who already uh, have a limited capability so their uh, children move into uh, their parents house to uh, live with their parents and then uh, 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 help their parents and take care of their parents. I think it's also, uh, maybe, uh, uh, it's also uh, happened in, in, in uh, the case of uh, Japan. Yeah, I think mm, mm. Yeah, it's only based on what I saw. <laughs> in, but but uh, maybe uh, it's also interesting that uh, basically, uh, I'm, I don't know, is it because of the Eastern uh, 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 culture or kind of thing like that, that we still share some uh, similar uh, uh, things or similar condition or, or, or maybe or just based on each uh, uh, person or individual who also still have the thought of taking care of their parents. I think it's a very uh, interesting uh, things. Thank you. I think that's all for Indri. Okay, sorry, thank uh, you. Mm, mm. Thank you, Faito. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, of course, that uh, we could not extend again <laughs> because of the limitation of the time. That, but I will try to yeah, make such kind of conclusion, but uh, not conclusion, but I think a key word, uh, uh, dear all uh, guest lecturer, professor, Otsuka, Professor Yoshida, uh, Pak Bangun, Uja and Deepa Edo, that I have um, several keywords. It's very important, I think. Uh, change of consciousness and attitude, behavior change from Otsuka Sensei, and adaptation from Pak Bangun. And and the contrary is adjustment from Pai Tu. It's very interesting. Adaptation from Pak Bangun and adjustment from Pai Tu and Bu Janti is what is called is a 
connecting all of the discussion is about the next uh, situation of elderly people and the relationship between their adult children they've just married so i think it's very important for the next our future life of course in the world not only in japan and indonesia of course so it's very uh, i think it's very a uh, big contribution to knowledge and uh, information to again uh, developing our study in order to contribute a good thing for the people around the world i think is uh, our uh, simple <laughs> conclusion but uh, for me of course even for me is very uh, big study dear all sense uh, uh okay and I, i will have to finish and close the, this discussion uh, i'm sorry to the audience that uh, you can only write the chat and might be uh, each speaker can answer it because it's limitation of time i'm so sorry about that uh, apologize for that but i'll try to uh, catch the meaning of this five speakers uh, materials is very important so they can discuss and we can conclude the, the, the materials sorry about that so uh, because uh, we have no again more time to 28 i will uh, give the floors to to ati ati sensei okay. thank you moderator pak indri for the good managing time Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have already finished participating in the interesting discussion of the fourth ICSADU International Conference on Sustainability in Architectural Design and Urbanism. From this morning, we have learned about knowledge of inclusive design in Japan and in Indonesia, and the research shows that. Inclusive design have an important role in the development of built environment now and the next future. And the result of this discussion provide a challenge for us to develop inclusive design in the educational of architecture and urbanism and to implement it to this to solve the problem in uh, with environment to make it more humanized. Okay, dear attendants, let me invite the head of architecture department to convey the closing speech. Please, Dr. Agung Budi Sarjono, time is yours. Speakernya Pak Agung, mic-nya sorry, microphone. Oke okay, sorry, uh, thank you Bu Ati, uh, Alhamdulillah. I think uh, this event has gone well. Uh, there are interesting topic and so interesting discuss. Ya yeah, betul. Unfortunately, this time is so short. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it uh, it is uh, so interesting. Okay, thanks to all the presenter for sharing their knowledge. To moderator uh, who guided this event attractively. Uh, hopefully, this is useful for all of us. Thank you also, ladies and gentlemen, the committee and all parties involved in this event. We close this session. Don't forget there is upcoming event in the third series so that uh, I think it's no less interesting too. Goodbye to see you at the next time. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ladies and gentlemen, finally we are 
arriving in the next session of the webinar, the fourth IC Sadu. On behalf on, of steering committee, I'd like to say thank you to all of the attendants, to speakers, to participants, moderators, with WCU teams, faculty of engineering, and all of the committee. And uh, I would like to invite you to all to, uh, to participate in the fourth IC Sadu Series 3. Please, Bu Yuli, could you uh, share screen for the information before we close this meeting? Okay. It will be arranged in, um, at uh, 9 October 2020. Yuli, could you please? Yes, can see it? Not yet. Not yet. And the speakers will be Professor uh, Acharawan Chutarat from King Mungkut University, uh, Thailand, and Professor uh, Susumi from um, Syracuse University, and then Professor Ernie. Setiawati from Universitas Diponegoro, and then Profesor Edi Prianto from Universitas Diponegoro, and Profesor Agung Brianto from Universitas Diponegoro. So please don't miss it, and we will see you next time in the third series of the fourth IC Sadu. And thank you for your all attention. And Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, stay excited. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Saya Nara Sensei. Mata. Saya Nara Sensei. Cak Mata. Thank you very much. Thank you Pak Indri. Thank you Andi. Thank you Pak Edo. Andi. Salam di. Asyik. Ya Pak. Thank you, Prof. Yusida. Thank you, Bu Yanti. Thank you to Pak Edo and as well as Pak Bangun. Halo, Pak Nabi. Pak Suka. Pak Suku, Pak Tursun, Pak Suku. Oke. Pak Sandi, Pak Sandi. Berikutnya Pak Agung ya, berikutnya Pak Agung Dwi. Bye-bye. Insya Allah. Insya Allah. Insya Allah. Nanti, Bu Ati. Terima kasih.